way back in time. But my favorite, my favorite cartoon when I was a young boy was Underdog. Because I always felt like the underdog. You know, I lived right east up on Flatwoods Road, North Alabama. I did a funeral this week out in Batson, and I mentioned being from Alabama. And at the graveside, I mentioned the word Tuscumbia because it comes from the word Tuscumbian Indian. And it's real red dirt where we're at. You know, we color the ground from which we came, ashes to ashes, dirt to dirt. We're just dirt bags. Amen. Amen. The treasure inside of us is Christ. Hallelujah. So don't get offended at that. That's another sermon. So, but anyway, that is, so we color the dirt. Now, I mentioned that. When I walked out, a man looked at me, and his name was Brige. No, I'm bad, my bad. Uh, another, another was in a Guidry. He was a Guidry. And he said to me, he said, uh, uh, you know where Wheeler Mountain is? I said, excuse me? He said, you know where Wheeler Mountain is? I said, yeah, I know where Wheeler Mountain is. I was raised on Wheeler Mountain. He said, me and my wife here, Tiny, called her Tiny. She about like that. Amen. He said, uh, we, we, were, we lived on Wheeler Mountain. And uh, we talked about Miss Ruby's store. We started going down memory lane. He, he hung out at Little Israel. Little Israel was a group of young people that were, were involved in um, a drug addiction that had came out, and they, they sang all over the place. And, and that was the way they kept it going. And I preached at Little Israel. I had family that preached there, so we knew of the, it was a drug rehab place. And up on the mountain, and, and any time you do something like that, the, the locals always think uh, uh, you're, you're dope growing, and you're doing something wrong, you know, because they're Christian out there in the middle with a, a commune, you know, Kenny, so all the locals get a little nervous. My mom and dad were, and uh, then I got saved and connected with them, and it was just unique to meet somebody had been for Valerie, good to have you here. Y'all give Valerie a hand. Good to have her back. Amen. Can, can I say this to you? If you remember underdog at all, when criminals in the world appear and break the laws that they should fear and frighten all those who see or hear, the cry goes up both far and near for underdog, underdog, speed of lightning, roar of thunder, fighting all who rob or plunder, underdog. How many know we need more underdogs in the world, huh? When in, when in, when in the world... The headlines read of those whose hearts are filled with greed, who rob and steal from those who need to right the wrong with blinded speed, goes underdog. Speed of lightning, roar of thunder, fighting all who rob and plunder. Now you say, Pastor, ask Craig, what are you talking about, underdog? Underdog means disadvantaged. And when I'm reading the Word of God, I see over and over again the disadvantaged. And my favorite characters in life and movies all have to do with underdogs. Those had to admit that. Matter of fact, I'll be honest with you. Many of you have watched uh, uh, tremendous Christian movies lately, and, and almost all of them have an underdog in it, whether it be in a sport of football or basketball. So, and you'll get to a place, and I do, I tear up. I just tear up, man. I just start, I, just something about the, the it, it just affects me when I see an underdog overcome. And when you came out of sin, amen, and God pulled you up out of the gutter and put you in the uttermost, amen, he changed things in your life. Christ came for those of us who were disadvantaged. Amen. I've used the term misfits for years. So today I'm going to share with you three quick things. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to take my time. Forget quick. But here it is. First, to, be a good, to be, understand to be an underdog, you've got to stop complaining. you just got to stop complaining. Well, Pastor, you know, I, I'll be honest. I've got to a place where I just don't even pay it, a lot of attention to any of the politics right now. Amen. Just stop complaining. The next thing you need to do is understand that when you stop complaining, that your problems are relative compared to others. If you focus only on your problem, well, Pastor, I've got this, I've got that, this happened in my family, I constantly help people see a bigger picture. Well, they'll come in, they're upset over one thing, I'll show them a bigger picture. There's always a bigger picture somewhere. And in my life, I look at it, and I say, man, you know, I, I struggle sometimes walking, I stumble and fall, this, that. But my sister was in a wheelchair. So I can, when I'm working out with weights, when I'm, when I'm on that treadmill, when I'm doing stuff, I remind myself she was in a wheelchair. You keep pressing. You keep walking. You know, quit, quit uh, looking at only yourself and realize in life, my friend, other people are going through stuff too. Change your perspective, not your problem. Sometimes you can't change the problem, but you can change your perspective. And stop trying and start training. Stop trying. Start training. I'm going to hit that one here real quick in a minute because I don't well, I'm trying. 
Now, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with trying, but the option of trying is training. Train. You know why there's prayer meeting here on Tuesday night? Training. You know this band up here? If I look up here and say, well, y'all just help. Don't, don't be mad at them. They're trying. No, they train. They train their music. They train uh, a football team. Amen. Basketball, whatever. They're not just out there trying to play. They've trained for that moment. Years ago, I was trying to get healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was eating a few less chips, uh, uh, a little less sugar. Amen. I went from sugar Coke to Diet Coke. I was trying. But then one day I decided, you know, I'm going to quit trying to start training. And for the last year and a half, I've been training. Amen. I've been working on my body. I've been working, you know, and it ain't much to work on. I know. And you, the results are slow. When you hit 60, H, or wherever you're at, amen, they, they, it, you know, it just, it, it, it slows down. You don't get a lot of, you know, I watch these young people. I go work out, you know, and stuff. And I watch these young people walk by the mirror and do this. I walk by the mirror like this. I just... You know, that's just where I'm at right now. But I'm training. I'm training. I'm not just trying. I'm training here. Joseph, amen. Genesis chapter 37. Are you comfortable? This is the account of Jacob's family. Remember, Jacob had 12 kids. They were known as the, the uh, tribe of Israel. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bela and the sons of Zephah, the father's wives. He brought their father a bad report about them. Now, Israel, verse 3. Now, Israel loved Joseph. That's still Jacob, Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age and had made an ornate robe for him. We know it as the coat of many colors. Now, let me just mention a few fatherly things here. Favor follows whoever favors the father. And when I look at this passage and I see that he loved Joseph, it tells me that Joseph loved him. Amen. It's hard as a parent to pick one child because what happens is the sibling rivalry begins to rise up. And I wish I could stop it. I've seen it in every family, including mine. It, it will, at one time, it, it just springs up. It happens. And blessed are the siblings who get along. I say that in love because I know a lot of siblings, it just seems like they, they, they fight over stuff. Amen. This is where grace and mercy comes in on all of our lives. Amen. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. So he's 17 years old. It's hard enough being a teenager. But to be 17 and have your older brothers look down on you and disdain you, amen, because your daddy loves you is a hard thing. Joseph had a dream, and then he told it to his brothers. Now, this is the next bad problem. Sometimes you have dreams, hush up. Don't talk about your dream, amen, particularly if they have something to do with this. They hated him all the more when he told them their dream. He said to them, listen, hey, guys, I had a dream. We were binding the sheaves together. We were putting, you know, uh, wheat together, of grain out in the field. And suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while yours just fell over and bowed down to mine. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more. They added some more hate onto it because of his dream and what he had said. Then he, he had another dream. And what did he do? He told it to his brothers. Now, I'm going to tell you, he's not the smartest teenager in the, in the group. Amen. He just, just not. He's just not there. So he told it to him. He said, listen, I had another dream. By this time, the sun and moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. He told his father as well as his brothers. His father rebuked him, smart dad, and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Father, thank you for the word. God, open it up to us. Help us understand where we're at in the Bible, God, and, and walk our lives through it in Jesus' name. And everyone shout. Everybody shout underdog. Amen. All right. God bless you. Maybe see. Maybe that's why I'm so love dogs. You know, I've always just loved dogs. I'm about dog. Joseph he was the poster child for an underdog. I mean, right now his his brothers are against it's bad enough to have one sibling, but amen, to have all your siblings against you, uh, the older ones against you. His brothers hate him, his daddy favored him, and graced him. He went from the pit to slavery to prison. And I believe every time he found himself in a disadvantage, he remembered the favor of his father. Now, Joseph changed his perspective. Let me say it again. He changed his perspective. When he was in the pit, he settled for just being alive. Sometimes you just got to settle for being alive. You're in a hospital, just settle for being alive. Thank God I'm alive. Second, in slavery, he settled for being a top slave. If I'm in slavery, he didn't say, oh, poor pitiful me. And this is the issue among a lot of us, uh, particularly American believers, we, we feel entitled we, we feel depressed with bad things happen to us, and, and you've got to change your perspective the way things look. So he just settled for being the top slave. By doing that, he ended up in prison. In prison, he settled for being the best prisoner 
And then he had dreams, and he also interpreted dreams for the Pharaoh. Amen, and got out. But he was the best prisoner he could be. So I was in jail for a little while, and I became the best guy I could be in jail. So much so that when I left jail, the guards thanked me for coming. Amen. Anytime the guards thank you for coming, and 22 of my cellmates, 21 of them were all in church with me. Every night I had church. Amen. I didn't have to wait till Sunday. I had church. So much, again, so that when other preachers came in, our guys wouldn't even go hear them because they were tired of hearing the same old stuff over and over. Amen. But with me, I lived with them. I was among them. And again, if you don't know, I was, I was thrown in jail for protesting against abortion. And I don't see a problem with that. If you do, well, you're in the wrong church. Amen. Uh, there was all, uh, there's always something pulling inside of Joseph it, to make him know that there was something better. Though he seemed continually to find himself in a disadvantage, you know, again, in that pit, again, into uh, Pharaoh's house, amen, into the prison uh, as a slave, amen. He found himself at a disadvantage, but he, he didn't allow it to keep him down. Something has to get down on the inside of you and say, you know, I may be an underdog. I may seem at a disadvantage, amen, but it ain't over yet. We think if I just, you know, if I didn't have a disadvantage, maybe if I wasn't born the way in the place that I was or, or the work that I do or the home that I have or the health that I have or the finances that I have, you know, by, uh, having no husband or no wife or having that husband or that wife, amen, uh, you know, I could do something for God. That, that's the way God likes it because it forces us to rely on him. Amen. It's our disadvantages. It's our disabilities. And by the way, disabilities need not disqualify for whatever you got in life. So if you got hope and you got God, you got a miracle. Last Sunday, Pat Sharp stood at the pulpit in the North Campus and thanked everybody for praying for him. Amen. I'm saying again, if you got hope and you got God, you got a miracle. Amen. The size of the person is more important than the size of the problem. You just got to rise up above it. And I'm repeating this to some people that have gone through some very hard things lately that you've been a little bit on the disadvantage side, but I'm pulling for you. I'm pulling for you. They refuse to hold on to the common excuses for failure. Amen. Psalms, when you're reading the Psalms, they were written during a time of difficulty. When you read the epistles, amen, most of them were written in prison by, by Paul the Apostle. George Washington was buried in the snows of Valley Forge when he decided to cross. Amen. Abraham Lincoln was raised in poverty. Franklin D. Roosevelt had infantile paralysis. Glenn Cunningham, I know that's a, that's a name that may be old for some of you, but he was burned so severely that uh, the doctors told him that he would never walk again. He went on to set the world record in the one mile in 1934. Amen. In other words, he decided, you know what, I'm not, I may be at a disadvantage because of the burns, but I can keep on pressing on. So how do we, how do we become victorious as an underdog? Again, stop complaining. Proverbs 18, 20, 18, verse 20, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Stop complaining. Yo, when you start working your tongue towards, wee, 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 wee. A while ago, uh, I, I walked back here in the back, and Josiah was kind of getting on to JJ, and she looked over at me, and she went, you know what she's saying? He's over here complaining. I wonder where she learned that. Amen. She, she picked up on that. Yo, with your tongue, amen, with the tongue, there's life, there's power there, and they that love it shall eat the fruit. Positive thinking is how you think about a situation. It's how you think about it. Enthusiasm is how you feel about a situation. And the two together determine what you do about a situation. So the first thing you got to do to become an underdog, stop complaining. Next thing, change your perspective, not your problem. This thought can set you free. If I can't do something about a problem, it's not my problem. If I can't do something about a problem, it's not my problem. I'm fit to help you right now. Listen to your pastor. It's a fact of life. It's not a problem. It's a fact of life. If we practice this, we would have less stress. I've gotten to a place in life where I can't make certain people love one another. I can't make certain folk come to church. And I realize in my life, I can't stop negativity among certain folk. They just always going to be negative. But you know what? It's not my problem. If, it, if I could change it, listen, parents, some of us are trying to change things around our families. We can't change it, Kenny. I can't make it change. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to back off and say, Lord, that's just life. Amen. And because it's just life, it's not my problem. If it's not my problem, then I'm going to quit stressing over this. Amen. I'm going to quit letting it keep me up at night, ruin my meals, 
Amen. When they call and they tell me about their problem that they won't allow me to change, I'm going to smile and hang up the phone. Come on. Amen. You got to do that. Well, when Joseph was in the prison, it was not his problem. He couldn't do nothing about it. He had to wait on God to remove him from one place to another. When Potiphar's wife uh, uh, lied about him and trumped up a charge on him, he's put in jail. Not his problem. But while he was there, he made the best of it. And there's times in life you got to look back and say, you know what? I, can't. I, I have prayed over my, you know, I talk about my body. I have prayed over my muscular dystrophy and, and, and my, my falling when I walk and, and, and the struggles that I have with trying to gain muscle. But look, I, I can do what I can do. And that's all I can do. Amen. And when I get to that place, I just say, God, all right, you, it's going to have to be your grace, Bob. Bob, you pretty near died last year. Amen. Amen. So, so when I look back at the underdogs and I see what God has done in life, amen. So we have influence in some areas, don't we? Amen. We got influence. We got a sphere of influence in certain areas. And we have concern in other areas. I'm not telling you not to be concerned. I'm not telling you not to pray. Amen. But we have concern. You got to know the difference. Amen. I got to know when I can influence things, and I got to know when I have concern about it. But I, I'm not going to let it destroy my life. Amen. Now, number three here, stop trying to start training. You can try to run a marathon every year and fail, but when you start training for it, you're going to have success. Again, the band don't try, they practice. In life, you know, I've I watched some of you go from trying to training. Training's a powerful thing. When I was a kid, my dad, you know, he was a, a banjo player. He loved to play his Gibson banjo. It's hanging up in my man cave right now, his old Gibson. But he wanted me to play the guitar. You know, it's just what he wanted from me. I, I, I don't do well. I tried. I tried. I laid the guitar on the side of the bed with a comic book in one hand, and I strummed the guitar like that so my dad could hear me in there crying. Honest to God, I did that. Do you not think he realized that I wasn't fretting from G, C, and D? He meant it was just open strings. He knew that by looking at my tender little fingers with no calluses on them. He knew uh, you and that trying, but you ain't training. In a sense, I, I, can't play, I can't play guitar. I even pick up a tambourine every now and, and shake it just a little bit, but I'm normally a little bit out of time. Amen. Some group yeah, last week bought me a tambourine, signed it, and gave it to me. That's depressing. Dude, you got to stop trying in life, start training. Amen. You got to train your mind. You got to cast down imaginations that try to exalt themselves above God. You got to train in prayer. Amen. When I, when I go to somebody, I don't find somebody part time praise. I don't find somebody knows how to pray. Amen. They've trained themselves. They can, they can reach God. Amen. I, I, I want to train myself in the Word of God. The Scripture talks about us training ourselves as soldiers. Amen. To stay with it. So when preparation meets opportunity, it equals success. When preparation, prep, you got this week, this week, 260 kids came. We had buildings that were not prepared. They hadn't been prepared in two or three years. Amen. They've just been left abandoned, literally. Amen. So we have to. So what we had to do over the last few weeks is prepare, and we had to go in. We had to remodel. We had to work. We had to clean. We had to do things. We had to go to other buildings. We had to make sure the ACs were working. Everything had to do with preparation. Here come all the food in for the for the kids to eat, and I had to believe God that this thing was going to work out. These kids were going to be blessed this week. We had to prepare. When preparation meets opportunity, them showing up, we had success. When, when those ladies left that were part of that camp, the leaders. They were grinning. They were smiling. They wanted to come back next year, and I'm thinking, we'll talk about it. Amen? No, 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 we'll let them, but, but maybe not that big a crowd. But the issue is simply this. This is the formula for you to have success. First, you've got to prepare. Why are you in school? You've got to remind yourself, Megan, I'm here to prepare so that when opportunity comes, I am successful. So if I'm training for something, whether it be electrician, auto body, uh, uh, a CP, uh, whatever, whatever it is, uh, y'all, y- the computer stuff y'all do. Amen. Uh, y- 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 when, I, when I'm preparing for it, an opportunity comes, boom, I have success. Amen. Such was a young man by the name of Jabez. I love Jabez. It's just a couple of verses. First Chronicles 4, 9. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother named him Jabez. Jabez sounds like the, the Hebrew word for pain. Saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, everybody say, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory, that your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted him his request. 
It just throws these verses in there. Now, I preached on each one of these years ago, but I just want to throw it all here together and help you understand. This young man, Jabez, felt like an underdog. He felt disadvantaged. You know, Jabez, his name literally means pain, distress, vex, vexation. Amen. He was born in pain. His mom said, you hurt me so bad, I'm going to call you Jabez. Amen. To go through life called pain. And I've heard some of you say that about your kids. You call them a pain. I stopped right there. There's more to that sentence. But his name reveals the times of hardship into which he was born. And we don't know his hardships. But we know he was tagged there. In essence, when you understand pain, hurt, grief, ache, be careful with pain. Uh, it, you know, when I hear teenagers tell me they got a headache or they got pain, and it's at my age right now, I look back and I, I, I just grin at them. I mean, I, I do. I grin. I go, are you serious? You think you're hurting right now because you washed your clothes or you made your bed, amen, or you did this. Listen, well, too much pain and you start anticipating it and you start looking for it, too much. The results, your pain begins to lock you in. You become afraid to try or you became, become afraid to train. You, be, you become afraid to uh, have the right perspective. You become afraid of other relationships because of pain, I, afraid of new opportunity, to venture out, to failure. You're afraid of disappointment. You have an idea, just leave me alone. Amen. I've often used this phrase, and this it will help you out. I call it ABCDEs of an underdog. Amen. Attitude, belief, capacity, determination. Amen. Last point is enthusiasm. See it again. Attitude. How's your attitude? Your belief. A, B, C, D, E. Why do you do this, Pastor? Because I want to train you to learn this. This is what you write down. Amen. Unless you just got a great memory, look up there. Some of you take your phones, look at it again. Attitude, belief, capacity, amen, determination, enthusiasm. Where did I find all these ABCDEs? Amen. I found them in the man Jabez. I found them all inside of him. First, I saw his attitude and his belief. Bless me indeed. Do you know how afraid we are to say, bless me, Lord? I'll say bless you when you sneeze. I won't. The other people do. I will, I will never say I will never say, bless you after you sneeze. If you say that around me, you sneeze, and you look at me and go, waiting on your pastor to be sanctimonious, I ain't saying it. Amen. That bless me came from believing you had a devil inside you. You sneezed it out, and I got to say bless you to keep the devil from coming back in. Let me first confirm this with you. I don't believe you got a devil when you blow snot out your nose. Can I get an Amen. So I ain't saying bless you. can say bless you all you want. I just say come on out of there. Amen. Then you sneeze again and whatever's in there is already, already out. But I don't, I'm not afraid to say anymore. Bless me, Lord. Say it with me. Bless me, Lord. Say it again. Bless me, Lord. Oh, Pastor, that just that sounds so selfish. No, it don't. I got a father who I favor. And because I favor him, he favors me. I believe I'm favored of God. You got to believe you're favored of God. You got, and listen, I've said this for years. If you don't wear the coat of favor, if you don't wear the coat of many colors, hang out with somebody that does. Amen. Maybe some of that residual will fall off on you, and you'll start figuring out that you blessed also. Can I get an amen? So first, he, he said, bless me. And he, that's attitude, amen, and belief. In fact, go ahead, next slide there, sis. I think I'm somewhere around here. Amen. Uh, keep going. Oh, no, back up. I like that one. When you're more familiar with pain than you and praise, what do you do? Pray. You mean, I'm more familiar with pain than I am with praise. So what do you do? You pray till your praise gets there. Amen. You just pray. I'm, I'm glad you did that. I needed to see that one myself. Amen. Attitude, belief. God has influence in my life. Amen. Bless me indeed. It's an absolute blessing, distinct blessing, pronounced blessing, remarkable blessing, incredible blessing, a ridiculous blessing, an abundant blessing, a blessing indeed. So first he prayed, Lord, bless me indeed. That was his attitude that God's going to bless me. Amen. I got this belief that God's going to bless me. Good things are coming my way. By the way, happy birthday, Joseph. Amen. God bless me. Jabez had a God-sanctioned vision. And happy anniversary to you and Tony for tomorrow. Amen. Woo. Stuff happening everywhere. Blessings, the opportunity for blessings. Amen. His only hope was in God. Psalm chapter 40, verse 1 says, David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. 
I cried out. I have a belief that when I cry, he hears me. I have this, uh, this understanding that God gets hold of me. Amen. When I cry out, he turned. He heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock. He gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Amen. When you're in a pain so severe, you can't praise. You got to pray. You got to pray. And when he prayed, he said, God set my feet up on the rock, pulled me out of the pit. Amen. Of such an underdog disadvantage, and God did that. Then he says, enlarge my border. That's capacity. Amen. That's, he prepared himself for this. Enlarge my border. With God's sanctioned ambition, Jabez asked for increase. He wanted God to expand his opportunities for service. Now listen to me real quick. Before you pray that, you better prepare for it. You say, God, I want you to bless me. And God gives you great territory. He takes the limits off of your life. You better have prepared for it. Because if you win a lottery and you don't know how to handle your money, you will lose that money. If you prepare for a, if you get a job opportunity and you didn't pre prepare for it, you're going to lose that job. Preparation is everything. Amen. So when he said, Lord, enlarge my territory. Do you know when I used to pray this? I used to pray this when I was in a little hotel. I used to pray this when I was in a little auction barn. I used to pray this at a, at a large church. Then when I moved out to New Caney, I started praying it, praising this and, and praying it again. And God began to enlarge. You, when you ask God, Lord, enlarge my territory, and 110 acres falls in your lap, you better prepare, know that you prepared for it. Then you get another five acres in another church. You better know that you have prepared for it. And he raised up people that help take care of it. Amen. Because if you don't, you're going to lose it. So everything in life for me has to do for preparation equals uh, plus opportunity equals success. That's, so he prayed, God, take the limits off. Amen. And if you're ready for that, say it with me. Take the limits off. Amen. Amen. He had been limited and bound by pain. Pain kept him down. But he said, I refuse to live a life of just trying. I've been training for this moment. So, God, I'm asking you, enlarge my border. Amen. Give me more than what I got. Take the limit. Limit me something that binds or confines. Amen. Take the barriers off, something that blocks passage, prevents movement or action. Break the barriers of my past. Break the anticipation of pain in my life. Help me to overcome my own name. Amen. Psalm 142, 7, set me free from my prison. You know what a lot of our prison is, what we think about ourselves? What we think about ourselves, we think we can't do it. My family holds me back. My children hold me back. This all, I can't do that. No, set me free, amen, for what I think about myself. Myself was pain, Jabez, pain, born in pain, lived in pain. But I don't believe that anymore. I say, God, enlarge my border. Amen. Set me free that I may praise your name. Then the righteous will gather about me because of your goodness to me. Then he said, Lord, if you're going to do this, you're going to enlarge my border, I'm going to need help. Make sure your hand's with me. I need your hand. Your hand, God, I need your hand. You know how you get God's hand? By seeking his head. Amen. I seek his head, I get his hand. Amen. So if I'm seeking after him, amen, I'm going to get his hand. That is, again, that's determination. A, B, C, D, determination. With God's sanctioned cooperation, Jabez asked for God's guidance. Same as David when he prayed, lead me beside still waters. God, I need your hand to be with me. Number four, keep me from harm. Amen. Come on up here, Joseph. Keep me from harm that it may not pain me. I think this to me is the hardest thing for us to pray at times. You know, God, keep me from pain here. Amen. I, I, I need some help. Keep me from harm. When we pray, don't we pray this over our kids? As they head out at 16 years of age in a vehicle, every one of my 16-year-olds have had wrecks that I know of. Five kids, 16, 16, 17 years, they didn't, they didn't hit something. It just happened. Somebody said, will you buy your kid a vehicle? I would love to buy them vehicles if they pay for their own insurance. How do you realize that's cheaper than buying the vehicle? Because at that age, it just, it's tough. But we pray. God, keep them from harm. How about praying it for yourself? Keep me from Keep me from that it may not pain me. Finally, he asked for God's protection. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And here's the amazing thing. And God granted 
him his way. It wasn't because Jabez was righteous, because he trusted God. Amen. He found a place in life where he saw the grace and the mercy of God. Amen. Jesus taught us the same thing when he said, I want you to ask, I want you to seek, and I want you to knock. Amen. Ask, you'll find. Ask, and it will be open. Seek, knock, you know the scripture. You know what that is? That's enthusiasm. A, B, C, D, E. That's enthusiasm. Attitude, belief, capacity, enlarge my border, determination, your hand with me, and enthusiasm. When God answers your prayer, you are enthusiastic. Amen? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. What makes underdogs successful? They train harder than most because of their disadvantage. Hebrews 12, 11, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. I'm not boasting to you about my workouts. I get, I get two hours a week. That's all I do, and then the rest of the time I'm working around the ranch and doing what I do. But it is rehab for me. It is training for me. And it's painful. It hurts. James, if it didn't hurt, I wouldn't know I was getting any, I wouldn't get anywhere. But but it, but in that training is so important. The number of souls won does not determine the strength of God's kingdom. The number of trained disciples do. Amen. When God trains us and we start learning, amen, we're supposed to die training, not trying. Well, Pastor, how do we do it? First, stop complaining. Amen. Change your perspective, not your problem. Stop trying to start training. Hallelujah. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Lord, there are some underdogs in this house. Like Joseph, siblings have been against them. Moms and dads didn't understand them. But God, I pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. We remove, remove the tag of pain and disdain and the things that happened when they were young. We, we pray for grace and mercy to fall upon their lives and angelics to lead them to be with them, to guard them, protect them. Father, I thank you that we move from a place of trying to a place of training. Lord, there are times I've picked up my gun and I, I tried to hit a target, but when I sat there and I reloaded and reloaded and reloaded, I was training, hitting the mark. God, help us to train to hit the mark, press for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. With your heads feel bowed and your eyes closed. If you sense that you are not right with God and you just want me to pray with you, right where you sit, just put your hand up and back down. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that hand. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Four or five hands. I'm confident God's going to meet your need right now. Pray this with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins shortcomings, failure. You know I'm an underdog. You know I've been disadvantaged. But God, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you to enlarge my border, expand my territory, keep your hand upon me. Amen. Keep pain away. Grant my request in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise in here. Come on, give him praise. Amen. I'm pulling for the underdogs. Hallelujah. If I get our servant leaders to come up real quick, pulling for the underdogs here in this house.